Hi, uh, everyone. I'm Wen Liang. Uh, I'm a full-time engineer in Red Hat. I've been working for Red Hat for about four years. And in the meantime, I'm a part-time student, uh, majoring in computer science. Uh, and it's a master's degree in Columbia University, uh, focusing on the machine learning track. Today, I will give the presentation. Uh, the presentation is AM state, Yamo Smith model, translate natural language into M state states. Uh, let's start from a brief introduction. Uh, how many of you have ever used M state before? It's a networking tool. How many of you used M state before? Okay, not too many people use this before. M state is a uh, M state is a network management tool that's particularly focused on reporting and uh, configuring networking settings on hosts in a declarative manner. It uses a state-driven approach where the desired state of the network setting can be described in YAML file. And applying the desired state using the tool ensures that the system's actual state matches the desired state presented in the YAML. And uh, here are some examples of uh, IP configuration through the network state, uh, through M state. Um, as you can see that M state have uh, its own schema and the syntax for the settings. Uh, on the left side, it's uh, uh, static IP configurations. On the right side, it's DHCP configurations. For the slightly complex, uh, networking configuration scenario for bump port configurations and uh, a bridge port configurations. Uh, they are the, the city name sometimes hard to remember even for experienced uh, engineer. Also it's hard for the uh, sysadmin to remember the city name. Thus we want to simplify the simplify the process for the system mean to avoid the hard time for kind of writing the um, writing the M state YAML and uh, configuring on the system. Also, um, when system means using the when system name is using the uh, uh, network state to configure the network, they also need to uh, handle some errors when failure happens like syntax error or some other kind of a configuration errors. It poses, exposes a lot of challenge into the system. I mean, it requires a lot advanced knowledge in MSD scheme syntax and expertise in network configurations. Uh, that's the motivation that we introduced a large language model for translating natural language into MSD states. We can utilize the power of large language model, which do not require advanced knowledge of networking and M state from a system in perspective. And uh, with, the, uh, with the benefits of the automation, this can ease the usability and uh, enhance the scalability because the system in do not need to have uh, advanced knowledge to be able to uh, easily using the M state. Also, the system can potentially in the future be integrated into a larger system like uh, the spoken language or system or voice system so that admin just give some instructions. It can deploy everything in the backend. Uh, we also have mechanism, but, uh, haven't been implemented yet, but uh, we plan to have mechanism for the error handling where we will do the checkpoint and uh, roll back on errors when we apply the desired state, but we found out that there is some configuration failure. We will roll back to the previous, uh, or restore to the previous correct networking configurations. As a result, this will increase the networking config efficiency and uh, reduce the cost. Um, this uh, paper, I think it just pub uh, published uh, this year, um, translating uh, natural languages uh, into 
YAML configuration is the emerging research areas. In this paper, they used the uh, code gene as checkpoint as uh, the pre-trained model. And, uh, and uh, they fine-tuned on, I think, the meaning of the YAML file, Ansible file on Galaxy. And, uh, but turns out that I, I honestly don't think that comparably their results is not as good as the model that I trained. I will show you later on. But uh, I also adopt a lot of approach from this paper. Uh, like evaluation metrics and uh, how we um, test the model or train the model. Um, here I'll talk about the workflow for uh, training and uh, for data pre uh, for data pre-processing and training and the evaluation. I will label the corresponding state with accurate and dis accurate and natural description first. Then I'll do the data du duplications to m avoid the model overfitting. And uh, I will do the data shuffling before the training so that the model can generalize better on kind of a random user inputs. Each state setting is normalized in a specific order to avoid the hallucinations. Um, the, 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 the property and settings appeared on the state are well sorted according to some, to some uh, uh, matrices and uh, so that the, as a result, we can avoid a hallucination in the end of the evaluation. Uh, I'll give you an example of uh, well-prepared data. This is an example of well-prepared data. We have a description, configure ETH1 to use IP address. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, you might want, because uh, the way that we saw it is not according to alph but alphabetical order. We have uh, some specific order. That's how we implement it in the M state. But uh, uh, indeed, it's already normalized and sorted in the proper order. This is a well prepared data. And uh, this is another well prepared data for Nin configure Linux bridge with IPv4 DHCP and uh, the port ETH1. Yeah, we just do the uh, edit the description and uh, sort the states properly. Um, here are the process for the model fine tune. We use a granite or Mistral or etc. as the pre-trained models. Uh, in the training phases, we there are a couple of tips I want to mention here. We are using LoRa low rank adaptation for large language model because uh, constraints or limitation on, on the GPU resources. Um, so that the low rank adaptation can use the, uh, the smaller metrics weights updates instead of the, its metrics uh, uh, dot products so that uh, with the n times r times r times, n, n times, n times r metrics and uh, R times M metrics so that we can avoid N times M metrics, the large metric updates, so that we can, it's easier or with the less memory or uh, power usages. We will use early stopping to prevent overfitting. This is quite useful for event, uh, to make the model generalize better. And in the model evaluation, we define our own evaluation metric. M state correct, YAML correct, even state distance. M state correct is uh, the mechanism to detect that if the generated response uh, confirms to M state schema or can directly be applied by M state control uh, apply command. YAML correct if determine if the generated YAML confirms to the YAML syntax and semantics. And leave and state distance all as known as uh, added distance, which is calculate the distance from the generated responses and expected responses. And uh, when we're doing the evaluation, the expected and generated responses are long, also normalized, setting appropriately sorted first before evaluating with the customized metrics so that uh, we guarantee that uh, the generated response and the expected responses are kind of uh, sorted first before we 
uh, evaluation in the next step. This is the most recent result for the most recent evaluation result for the Yamo Smith model. Um, as you can see, M state correct predictions corresponding to model generated M state state have 93% of a uh, 93 as a score, it's, which means 93% of the general responses can be applied by M state apply command directly. And uh, the exact match matrix means that generally the response is 100%. Uh, our general response uh, in 86% of the general responses exactly match with uh, expected responses, which is quite amazing and high. I can show you the matrix calculated by the other uh, appeared uh, calculated by other researcher, so you know how good the model is currently. And Yamo correct is uh, 100%, um, which means that all the uh, syntax semantics confirms to Yamo. Levenstein distance is 6.2. Um, it's relatively low in the sense that this 6.2 is only contributed by the uh, responses are not exactly matched, which is about 13.4. If you look at the exact match here, which is only 13.4 responses contribute to the Levenstein distance. That's the distance between the expected state and the generated state. And this result is actually calculated in the CI or, or generated by the CI. I deployed the CI where we have the container have all the dependencies installed, and the, the CI will run all the evaluation tests and generate the metrics for us. And this is a result from a code gene, multi fine tuned on the uh, Galaxy. I take the references the link in the end. And uh, in the bottom, uh, as you can see, the exact match score, exact match score is very low in there. This means that natural language to playbook or natural language to task. This, uh, uh, the, this paper is doing on the Ansible. And uh, they're using Koji Multi as uh, uh, the base model and fine tune on the Galaxy. Uh, comparably, I think uh, our model definitely outperform uh, this one uh, denoted in the paper. This is the, their final evaluation metrics. Um, And by looking at the post-generation process, we've actually found that uh, there are some uh, uh, invalid uh, properties generated by the model. Uh, and as a result, we have the clue that we need to improve our post-generation process, where we will filter out all the invalid settings. Here, in this example, DHCP v6 only will be filtered out, and the auto road timeout will be filled out because that's invalid uh, property name in M state. If we have filled out those settings, then uh, it's 100 per, per, uh, 100% match with the, uh, with the expected result. Also, in the second example, the entries uh, name ENX0 and type is net, that one cannot be directly applied by M state. Thus, we it gives us the hints that I need to incorporate the, some uh, validation mechanism after post-generation process. So, field it out in valid settings, validate the general response with the M state control format command. Uh, we will also consider model ensemble in the end, uh, which is the response generated by multiple models. Instead of using only one model, for generating the response. We use multiple model for generating the responses. And we probably use some majority vote in the end to merging different settings together. Um, and uh, also, as a future goal, we need to integrate the model to a larger system, which can automatically deploy the network and roll back on failures. That's on our radar, and uh, we will achieve that very soon. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Here is the demo time. Hi, everyone. 
as you can see on the screen. This is a gradual-based user interface that I made in order to, for us to quickly query the model with the networking configuration scenarios so that we can see what model can generate that, or what, mo what responses the model can generate. Notice that currently the model is served on a backend machine shipped with the 100 GPUs. And uh, in some slightly complex networking configuration scenarios, it might take models uh, a couple of seconds to generate the results. So please be patient. Um, let's start with the uh, testing first. We can start with a simple uh, networking configuration scenarios. We can assign uh, certain IPv4 addresses to ETH5. And the model can generate the response in low latencies. And also the desired state yes. generated by model have IP address, IP address matched. Uh, also have an interface name matched, uh, which means that model can s kind of understanding the uh, the meaning on the sentences. Uh, we can try another example to configure some IP v6 addresses on the on the dummy interface. And it generally the desired state with the IPv6 address matched and also interface name match. Let's try another example with the both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses can fit. We can fit the ETH1 Ethernet device with the static IPv4 addresses and a static IPv6 addresses. Okay, the model generated the desired state with IPv4 and IPv6 address matched. You might wonder, is this correct? Or it, can this be applied in M state directly? Luckily, I have another machine currently is running and waiting to, for, uh, waiting to be tested. We can copy the response from the model, the test on the machine. And This is a live machine that I just started and currently have a ETH1, ETH2 interfaces and it has no any connection on these two devices. So let's see, let's apply the the uh, the networking and the design state generated by the model. Okay, we apply, and it, it successfully applied the desired state. And let me ch let us check the connection. Okay, the connection currently is on. Let us check the 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 device. The device have IPv4 config and IPv6 config. Uh, yeah, I want to point it out that I don't know if you can see it there. Um, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of blurry, but the connection was actually configured on the devices. And uh, if you look at the IP command, uh, the addresses that prompt or generated by model actually configured on the system, on the device, uh, which means that our model is reliable in configuring the IP. Okay. It means that the model can, uh, for the IP configurations scenarios, the model can reliably configure the uh, networking settings. Let's switch the gear to uh, some bound configurations. Let's try what the model sees. Before doing that, let's clean up the connection on the system.
so the connection was clear. Okay. Yeah, I just cleared the, the system to make sure that no connection uh, exists. We configure the bounding interface with mode, active backup, and two ports. Uh, it's a kind of a, a common networking bounding scenarios. Yeah, luckily with the A100 GPU, it can quickly generate the responses. Uh, and we can also test model response in the backend machines. It's a, Let's copy the responses from model. It's a common uh, networking scenarios to configure bound with a certain bounding mode and the ports. Um, very common and uh, uh, the model also reliably generates the responses based on the user input. And uh, currently no connection on the ETH1, ETH2, no bounding connections. Oh, good. Then we can configure it. We apply the uh, design state generated by model. It also config correctly. Let's see the connection. The connection was actually on, and the 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 bound uh, the bounding connection was also configured. Let's check that again on the uh, IP link. Uh, we have the two Ethernet. Yeah, the two bunk, uh, the the two port connections on ETH and ETH two is configured, uh, and the, the bound connection, the controller connection, is also configured. And also, if you look at the device, the port device, they have a, they have a controller. They have a have a controller bound ninety nine, and uh, for the port ETH two, you also have a controller bound ninety nine configured. According, I mean, based on the uh, generate the YAML, uh, generate the design state from the model. Device have a controller, bound 99 config. We can check the bounding mode. Which is corresponding to the mode here. Okay, the bounding mode have active backup config. Um, Okay, so in bounding configurations, the model can also. Oh, I think somehow the, the correct des design state. The in video latencies. frozen. And, uh, uh, just based on the user inputs. Sorry, the video frozen somehow. Uh, I was trying to. Open with the. How many minutes do I still have? You still have 10 minutes. Okay, that's enough. Uh, I'll try to. Let's see. Hi, Link. Uh, we have the two Ethernet device have a controller, bound 99 config. We can check the bounding mode. Okay, the bounding mode have active backup config. Uh, so okay. The bounding mode. So in bounding with... configurations, the model can also generate the. So the bounding mode match with uh, the config, which is good. Um, which which is good. Yeah. Correct this design state in low latencies and uh, just based on the user inputs. Let's clear the connection and uh, we want to try uh, VLAN configurations.
we are still trying to push in hard um, to make the model as powerful as we can. So we haven't expanded the, the model, try to understand all the networking scenarios or configure all kinds of, uh, all kinds of different networking uh, types. But uh, eventually we will achieve uh, that goal. So, okay, the system was cleared. We can query the model again. We can ask the model to configure the VLAN on the Ethernet device. The model generates the responses. This is actually wrong configurations. And, and I um, purposely not deleting it in the video because I want you to see the kind of a randomness. Mm -hmm. Configure VLAN. Oh, it's sort of make mistakes. Let's try again. Because, uh, yeah, it's kind of a. Okay. Yeah, I, ideally, we. It didn't specify the best interfaces. Let's try again. Okay, this time is correct, I think. Yeah, this time is correct. After specifying the device name, this time I can get the, the configuration right. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of a randomness was introduced in the generation process. Yeah, it's correct. Um, yeah, like I said, we still need more training data to make it as powerful as we can. And also, let's test on the Backend. And so the V9 config connection is correct. Get config. Yeah, the VLAN connection is correct. In fact, so we have yeah, the VLAN device was as you can see corrected. So overall, um, I think current yeah overall I think the model um, is uh, reliable and uh, yeah we can trust the model generate the networking config uh, or M state configuration in these areas. But there are still some room for the model to improve with the, if we have a larger data sets. And uh, we are working on that. And it's also, we will add the kind of post-generation validation uh, in the future so that to make the model uh, uh, even reliable and uh, uh, more powerful and uh, can roll back on failures. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, this, uh, the presentation for today and uh, thanks for listening if, if, if anybody does anybody have uh, any questions yes uh, thanks a lot for your talk a I was wondering like um when it got something wrong like the sorry I, I can barely hear is oh is yeah, that it better yeah yeah much better um when when it was making mistakes, like a seven percent of the time, um, were there? Did you notice on any particular kinds of errors that it would make? You mean the model? Yeah, like when it output a configuration, um, you said like seven percent of the time the configuration had some something wrong with it. Um, I was just wondering, like, what kinds of misconfigurations it created? Were there certain kinds of errors it would make more than others? Or? You mean generated by model, right? Yes. Uh, I think because we are using some pre-trained model. The pre-trained model already have uh, some general understanding on networking concept. And uh, it might generating the, uh, some invalid uh, network uh, properties. Because in my example, probably current training data sets does not include some specific uh, 
uh, network property, properties like, for example, um, a row table, a row table ID, for example, then when we query the model to do something, it might kind of, uh, because it already have a, the pre-trained model itself already have a understanding on networking, it might generate some uh, uh, syntax might not make sense to the M state. Uh, but uh, the syntax actually appeared on the pre-training phase. So that's reason uh, this kind of a mistake is hap happening more often than probably than others. Also, before normalization, which is where we saw the, all the network settings in order, there are a lot of hallucination because given the fact that if, imagine that in a training data set, if we have ID on top of a base interface here, or we have a different settings kind of appear in different, uh, the settings not well ordered, we find it's very common to have uh, the mistakes that they will have a ID first, a base interface, and ID again, and base interface again, because it's not uh, sorted. But we already handled that in the pre-processing process. So that's the reason we can avoid the hallucination. But this can happen, but not, very, not happen very often in this model because we already pre-processed the model. And uh, yeah, that's the uh, That's the reason. Uh, I think probably that's the two mistakes that commonly happen yeah, in the model generation process. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. But also, I want to point it out that we would add the, the validation mechanism where we will fill out the invalid property, uh, the key name, if they have uh, something like root table ID. But it turns out that that's key, that the key is not appeared in the M state schema. Uh, we have a schema table that we can kind of look at. Then we will fill it out that setting. Yeah, so I have a question related to the check part that you have introduced like two check tools, uh, YAML check and NM state check. Uh -huh. So for the model itself, it generates all YAML. Uh -huh. And so the sequence is like uh, doing the YAML check and then do the N state check. It's, it's just the right sequence. So my question is related to like uh, uh, you, M state itself have schema check um, also, it's kind of like you have to, to generate from the configuration from M state to YAML, then could be used to other tools. And why not like uh, you do the generation on M state schema type? And I'm not sure what's the configuration type uh, uh, format that uh -huh. M state itself used because you do two parts of check. Uh -huh. So it's just like a white shows like a YAML then the Default configuration that not YAML uh, standards. Oh, I, I I see what you mean. It's kind of a sort of overlapping between two metrics, yeah. right? Oh, well, we did that because we found out that the paper actually did that too. Uh, the paper, I think, uh, they have a schema correct Ansible aware. Uh, we haven't. Um, we tried to look at the algorithm actually for implement these two metrics, but we couldn't uh, find anywhere. We actually talked, because this paper was published by IBM, -er. we talked to them. They wouldn't let me know, because it's kind of a privacy. And uh, then we have to come up something ourselves. Uh, but uh, in our example, uh, I think you kind of write that uh, somehow that these two uh, the YAML correct and, and uh, M state correct have a uh, uh, overlappings on the uh, on the settings because if it's M state correct, it definitely is uh, YAML correct, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a very good question. I will I will check that uh, offline. To, f to see if it's indeed a redundant, if it's redundant, I will drop it out, drop the matrix. Yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Very quick question. Um, 
A very quick question. Um, yeah. How do you choose um, the pre-trained model? Like, like, why do you choose um, Mistro rather than um, Lama? Or uh, well, because you actually it de all, it depends on the first of all you have to it constrained by the the uh, power or uh, GPU power you have. If you have a low powered machine, then you probably need to find a model that have a lower weight so that you can easily train on. Also, uh, different models have a different expertise on different areas. Even for code generations, some model might be better in certain uh, uh, languages. Some model might be better than other. But I think you have to train it first before you have to compare. We have uh, we actually did a comparison. I not I haven't showed the the metrics on the table that generated by different models, but uh, we compared the uh, uh, we compared the the metric uh, evaluation metric, and we found it out that uh, there is one model that uh, actually does better than the other. Then we just use that model. Um, yeah, we will use the evaluation metric to determine which model. Uh, is a good pre-trained model, and uh, but uh, before actually training on it, we actually don't know which model is better than the other. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And also, can I know the tool that you use to create the interface of the um, response? Oh, you mean? I mean the interface that you showed in your demo. Uh, the tool that you use that one. This one? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what? Which tool is that? Um, can it's I a gradient based. It's gradient based. Hugging based also use that. Hugging based based use a lot of gradient based uh, too. It's a Python library. Um, you have a higher API, so you can easily build that. And also, I have uh, the conversation history here. Uh, we have uh, the history of uh, query re records. It's also, I want to show you another example. Um, that uh, this one. Uh, I actually have uh, the implement. I actually asked the. Uh, actually implement the ratings and feedback. Where we I want to implement the reinforcement learning from human feedback. That's also what I should do in the next step. Sorry, uh, time, uh, time as time's up. Yeah.